So as a quick introduction, I'd like to, to go over some of your required materials so that you can go ahead and get a lot of this stuff out of the way. Now, the big thing, the big thing that you're going to find and, and have to purchase for the class is a DSLR camera. And this is, a, this is the Nikon D5300. Um, it's roughly uh, $700 for the camera and the lens. Um, and I know that's a lot of money, uh, but we're gonna go through a couple of different strategies to find good equipment for uh, less expensive. Uh, this is a brand, when this was purchased, it was a brand new camera. So th that's partially the reason why uh, the, price, the price is at $700. Now, uh, a couple of other options that you could have is you could buy a Canon. This is, a, this is right here, a Canon uh, EOS 30D. It's a roughly 10-year-old camera, maybe 15-year-old camera. Uh, still in good working condition. I purchased it used uh, from a reputable dealer, and it's still working fantastic, uh, fantastic for me. But if you're, if you're looking to get into a hardcore, um, you can buy something more advanced like this. It's a Canon 5D Mark III. This is a, this is a professional grade camera. Uh, I think that when I looked at the World Press Photo Awards for 2016, the 5D Mark III was the most used camera uh, of those awards. Now, this is a very expensive camera and you probably shouldn't get it for Photography One class, but the basics are all the same. You, you basically need a body and a lens. Now, a camera body, in a DSLR camera, a camera body is where all of the computer, where all of the shutter, where all the sensor, where all of the card reading stuff, uh, that all takes place here in the camera. And we have a, what's known as a detachable lens, and so the lens, is, it gives us more options to what comes into the camera. Uh, and the great thing about, the lens, about having detachable lenses is then I can change how my camera sees the world. I can put on a, a long, uh, a telephoto lens, or I can put on a wide angle lens, or I could put on some sort of specialty lens, like a tilt shift or a fisheye, or all these different types of lenses that are out there. Um, and so it makes these really versatile uh, for beginning cameras. Now, the same thing applies to the used camera that I showed you earlier. Uh, this is a, as I said, this is a 30D. Uh, this is a 50 millimeter lens. This combination together costs uh, roughly about $150 total. So the, the, the old camera is still a fantastic, it's eight megapixels, which is enough to print an eight by 10. Um, that's all you need, that's really all you need. And then this is a, what's known as the Nifty 50, and you can get these for about 80 bucks, uh, brand new. Uh, so there's there's plenty of um, there's plenty of variability in in what you what you purchase and when. Um, the next thing that you guys are going to need on your uh, required materials is some sort of card that will go into um, the camera. Now there are two types of cards that you need to be aware of. The first is an SD card. An SD card is a little bitty card that um, that goes into the side of the camera, and it also uh, typically has, uh, you can put it into your computer by just sliding it into the side. There's usually a slot in most modern computers. It makes them quite versatile. Uh, the other type of card, and this is really for the older cameras, is what's known as the CF card, the, the compact flash card. Um, there's really no difference at this point that you guys need to know about whether a, car, a compact flash is better uh, than an SD card or vice versa. Uh, the main thing is that you get the right card for your camera. So for instance, this older, this older camera, the 30D, it takes CF cards and they, they just slide in, they just slide in and that closes up. And so then you're able to, to make pictures and it records on there. The SD card, um, is more versatile and more commonly found in uh, DSLRs that are what's known as a consumer quality DSLR, which is really your, your price point. This is where you need to, to stay. Uh, CF cards, some cameras, uh, some cameras have a slot that can either have a CF 
or a SD card. Uh, so you can shoot on one and then it transfers that information to another. Whichever card you get, you might want to you might want to buy your own card reader. Now some computers, as I said, most computers have SD card slots built into them, but no computer I've ever used has a CF card slot built into it. So you'll need to buy a separate SD card reader or CF card reader um, if you get a CF card. Just it's a good practice to have those around. Now we have some in the class that you can check out uh, or just borrow from the from the closet. Um, but you know, when, you, when you're outside of the class, you'll need to be able to download this stuff on your own. So it might be a good idea to buy one of those. And those typically run uh, about 20 bucks. So it's really not that bad. Uh, the next thing that you'll need for the class is what's known as a thumb drive or a flash drive. Basically, it's a USB drive uh, that plugs in and it's extra storage. Uh, or a, a way to transfer information back and forth. Now, this is a 16 gigabyte drive uh, that is, I think, yeah, this one's a USB 2.0. Now, there's no reason, there's no way to tell the difference between a USB 2 and a USB 3 uh, by the, the way that the thumb drive looks, but the USB 3 is, much, is a much faster drive uh, and has a very, very fast transfer rate. And so that's something that a lot of people want. They want, thing, they want the photos to transfer very quickly. Uh, the USB 2 transfers at something like 400 megabits per second, while the USB 3 transfers at something like 1400 megabits per second. So it's a significant increase if you want to go ahead and get the USB 3. Um, and I recommend, especially with large digital files these days, getting the USB 3. They're not significantly more. I believe that I purchased this for $5, and it's an eight gigabyte USB 3 drive. Um, but that said, I purchased three of these for $5, three of these USB 2s. So you get what you pay for, you get the speed if you wanna pay for that. The next thing you'll need to purchase for this class is Epson uh, Ultra Premium Photo Luster Paper. And you'll need to get uh, one of these boxes of uh, 50 sheets. You can see there's 50 sheets down here on the bottom. Uh, this, this box of paper should get you through the entire class. And they run about $20 um, either at Amazon or at uh, Camera Exchange down on San Pedro. This is the paper that you need to get. Uh, I brought a couple of other papers here and we'll go over paper type in class. Um, the one that I would recommend not getting is the, the ultra premium photo glossy paper. Glossy paper, uh, it looks cheap you'll just find that it doesn't look good. It has a, uh, almost like a candy coated finish. It doesn't, it doesn't have any, uh, any real tooth to the paper, which is something that uh, you'll find that you like, or at least I find that I like in my papers. If I want to have something that looks really clean, I'll go with the heavyweight matte paper. Uh, heavyweight matte is a, is a good inkjet paper, but we'll cover this later um, this is a supplemental paper, right? It's the next level of paper uh, from the Ultra Premium Photo Luster paper. So this is the paper I want you to buy, the Ultra Premium Luster Photo paper. All of our demos will be built around this paper. Uh, this is the paper that you'll need to, that you'll want to purchase. Your final requirement is, for the class is you're going to want to have some sort of external drive, so external hard drive so that you can pull your images off of your, um, off your computer off the camera, off the computer, and take them with you and you'll know that they're secure. Now, this is a LaCie drive. Uh, it's, it, it's a USB 3 and a FireWire. Uh, it's, I don't know, maybe three years old? No, nope. it's five years old. I, use, I have two of these that are duplicated uh, so that if one goes down, the other will pick it right back up where, where this one left off. Uh, that's a good archival storage method and we'll talk about archival storage in the future, but I recommend getting something like this that you can get a SanDisk or a, uh, a Passport or you know those My Passport drives, a w, uh, Western Digital Drive, but basically it needs to be a portable hard drive. I recommend no less than 500 gigabytes. Typically they come in about one terabyte, which is a good size. That'll last you for years. Um, 
which, you know, if you're going to buy one of these things, buy them for the long term. And I also recommend, if you can, to get the USB 3 uh, connector. USB 3, as I was saying, runs a lot faster. It's uh, 1,400 megabits per second as opposed to uh, the USB 2 of 400 megabits per second. So I highly recommend USB 3. It'll, it'll last you a lot longer. You'll be happier with the, the speed upgrade um, as opposed to something that's just going to you know, drag on and take forever to, to download your items. Now, as far as recommended uh, material, this is not required. So the first, first thing that we had uh, that we talked about being recommended was the CF card reader. Now, this is a multiple card reader. It reads CF, it reads SD, it reads um, MS Pro, Duo Pro, Duo, uh, MMC, SDXC. You know, it reads a whole bunch of different stuff. And it's good to have something that's a bit, a bit more versatile just in case you come across those cards, but they're definitely not required. And here again, the, my card reader is USB 3 as well because I want to download that stuff really fast. Now, the next thing I want you to think about getting, and we have some of these to check out. So... There's no reason for you to, to rush out to the store right now and get one, uh, is a tripod. And you just want something that's a really simple, easy to use tripod. You don't want something too complex uh, to start out with, but a tripod, something to get your camera off of, out of your hands and stable is a very important thing for you to have. Oh, and another thing that we'll need to get as far as required material and this is going to happen way late, later down the road towards the end of the semester, so you don't need to rush out to buy it right now, um, is mat board and foam core. Now, mat board is basically like white pieces of paper that are put together into a, uh, into a hard board. You see how stiff that is? And it, it comes out to about uh, a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch total. Uh, they have different, what they call different plies in, ply, in, in mat board. They have two ply or four ply or eight ply. And that's basically the number of sheets of paper laid down, the number of these thick pieces of paper laid down and glued together. Um, you're gonna wanna get a piece of mat board that is uh, at least four ply, that's, that's the good look. And you want it to be white with the same color on the inside that it has on the outside. Because you, um, you don't want the mat board to appear to have a weird tonal difference from the inside to the outside. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get a piece of uh, foam core, and you'll note foam core is significantly cheaper than mat board. I think it's, I think for a 32 by 40 sheet of this, which is what you'll need to get for both foam core and mat board, a 32 by 40 sheet. Um, this sheet is almost $6, I think it's $5.85 at that size uh, at Home Depot. And what foam core is, is it's a couple of pieces of paper that are sandwiched uh, around a piece of foam, uh, which is just basically uh, like styrofoam in the middle. And basically this will be your backing board when, you, when we present our mats. The next piece of recommended material that we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you guys to get is some sort of lens cleaning cloth. And this is important so that you can get the gunk you know, just gunk sometimes appears on your lens and it, you just want some sort of cloth that you can, um, that you can clean it off with. Now, this one uh, was a giveaway from Canon, uh, but we, you know, you can get those microfiber cloths that you clean sunglasses with. Uh, those work really well. Either way, it's, it's good to have some sort of cloth that you can clean your camera and your equipment with. Uh, finally, you're going to want what's called a UV skylight filter. And the, the UV filter fits on the end of the lens and just screws in into a screw mount. And so it needs to be the same size as the, end of, as the, as the lens, which in this case is a 77 millimeter. And it screws into the, to the end of the lens so that it, it's protecting the top of your lens. Now, the, the skylight filter, they run about uh, somewhere between 10 and $20. Sometimes I've seen them as cheap as like six or seven. Um, and so this is significantly cheaper than the actual lens. And so it protects the lens from damage, from scuffs, from just general wear and tear. It's like putting, uh, putting elbow pads on or knee pads. And so it'll protect it from general wear and tear. And so they come in different sizes. As you can see, this little, uh, this little bitty lens has a 52 millimeter skylight filter. 
where my big camera, the big one I just took off, that's a 77 millimeter. And so they, they come in different sizes and they also range in price value because of it. Okay, I think that covers it all. Um, I've given you the, the recommended supply list and the uh, required supply list attached to the bottom of this file. Uh, I'm really excited about what we're, gonna, what we're gonna accomplish this semester. I look forward to seeing all you guys and welcome to my photography classes. <laughs>